we read about it in history books and we would often imagine ourselves being in those moments of history that shaped our time they thought about it in schools and today i and my friend judy decided to visit discovery museum abuja to discover things about nigerian history you know to walk into history itself and finally get to have this experience for ourselves we weren't expecting what we met in this museum it was mind-blowing and i'm going to walk you through it so grab your chair grab your popcorn and stay to the end because we're going to walk you through history Our tour started at the reception where we exchanged our tickets and it felt like we were in another realm of this world. Then our next stop was a vibrant display of the three major tribes of the country. Now it felt like a visual symphony of diversity, Yoruba, Aosa, Igbo, and with colors dancing off the artifacts of each tribe. You know, as an avid learner, I had always craved a deeper understanding of these things. I wanted to see them and I haven't traveled that much. So seeing them, even though it's just an enclosed room, was an uplifting moment for me and I felt like I encountered culture in the way that I wouldn't have. Then we were quickly thrown into a brief history of Nigeria's first independence celebration. I will let you watch it for yourself. It was reached. In handing over the documents to the federal prime minister, Al Haji Sir Abu Bakr Tafawa Bale handed over sovereignty to a new nation. And these are the symbols of our independence the Nigerian flag, green, white, and green, the coat of arms, and of course, our beloved Nigerian national anthem. May God bless the people of Nigeria because, or more, ha, ah, we don't try. This hallway took us to the next exhibition room for our tour, but it had this aura of adventure and discovery that made us to like play around in it a bit, you know, before itching to get to the end and discover what mysteries it contains. And yes, because it threw us into a captivating display, and here the stories of our nation's helmsmen came to life starting from the dawn of independence till today. It's a tableau that comprises of our generals, presidents, vice presidents, and heads of state. Now, each with their own unique narrative, each with their mark etched into, you know, the tapestries of our history. Now, as we move from one profile to the next, we came face to face to the people who shaped our national trajectory. Of course, we are not people to judge what it has been like, but we honor these men because i'm sure that leading a country is not that easy this room also has the nigerian constitution uh although the light above it didn't allow for a very clear look you know and i found myself wondering what our country would look like if everyone leaders security operatives and citizens actually respected this document now a few steps away from this was a depiction of the nigerian army cartoonment we showed Nigerian soldiers in their varying states of readiness, eager to defend the country. It was a solemn reminder of those who put their lives on the line for us all, and may God keep protecting them anytime they are out there in the field. I mean, look at them, even though these are unreal, but it's still for real. Now, I love something about this museum because each passage, anywhere, everywhere just showed arts and artifacts from our dear country and you find yourself so much appreciative of what we actually have as a nation and you realize that we are not just beautiful people we've also got beautiful cultural references and it is so so beautiful and amazing this is the music room oh my god it felt like we were in some kind of time machine as we were transported to the 50s to the 60s and 80s in this room because as you are stepping into it you are hearing different music from all places from all angles you see names like felakuti sonia de oliver the cook osita debe and so many others i mean we were humbled being among those old talents because their music is that music that we had from dapo drivers the mechanics there's no how you will hear it and you will not dance to it. 
and I had the opportunity of selecting one for myself. And of course, I danced to it. What do you expect? I danced to Sweet Mama from Oliver the Goat. And we are on our way to the currency room and I had never seen so many versions of our currency in one setting. You know, of course, I saw some of them in school when our teachers would bring them. But this is a full discovery. Let me leave you to listen to the tour guide. That was Cowries. Cowries, which was used from the 1700 up until 1900. And then coins came in the forms of the British West African coin and pennies. These two, they were used across all West African countries. Later on, Nigeria was able to localize Hong Kong using Kobo from the smallest denomination, which was half Kobo, mm -hmm. up to the highest denomination, which was 50 Kobo. During the Nigerian Civil War, which happened between 1967 and 1970, these notes was used in some parts of the East. They called them the Biafran currencies. Okay, so I hope you learned one or two from that. Now, this is your currency and it's good to know all these things about our country. I mean, we are all from here and it's good to be grounded in your history. The next stop was a 3D virtual reality experience, which was a story about a boy from North who was displaced by war and they are now living in the IDP camp. It's a very moving story actually. Remember the thing I told you about Discovery Museum knowing how to celebrate the Nigerian culture? It also knows how to celebrate the Nigerian people. Look at this passageway. This is a canvas for all notable Nigerians that had done something great and made the country proud. The likes of Dara Queenly, Ngozi Okonjo Iwala and some footballers. Now this is the writer's boots. There is this thing about being in rooms like this. You feel like a part of them. You admire their prowess and you celebrate their creativity. There are book titles from authors like Chimamanda Adiche, Ole Showinka, Chinu Ashebe, among many other talents. I really loved being in that book. These are some of the musical instruments used by different tribes of the country. Art, it's beautiful. This is the digital art room and to actually enjoy this art you need a phone and there is an app you need to download which was what the tour guide was using to show us this art and you know to the ordinary eyes the art is static until you use that app and i had to download the app and <laughs> and this was it so you take your time to just look at this you know see how it just comes alive from the first start, everything looks static and then it comes alive with the app. Now, there is something about this digital art that makes it even deeper than it seems. And it's something that I learned in my philosophy class, which is appearance is not reality. It is so not reality because to the normal eyes, this art is just the way it was. But then when you look deeply into it, especially with that app, which is more like the search into it, you discover that there is more to it than what you can see with your normal eyes. And that message is deep. This is the abstract realism gallery. And uh, <laughs> it seems when you are talking about art and deep meaning, this is where you get it. Because these may look like illustrations. But they are illustrations of reality in a way that <laughs> oh my god anyways you know this thing they say that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder this as however isn't just about beauty it's about perception it's about what you felt from them what you can interpret them as you know as art lovers you understand that sometimes it's not even the message that the artist gives that you receive from it but eventually you get something and that is the you know when it feels like our ancestors wrote a love letter to us now art is something but all history art is like love letters from the past to the people in the present and the people that are going to meet it in the future now these are replicas of stolen nigerian artifacts that were never recovered and these replicas did a great job in telling us the story that the ancestors wanted them to tell. Here we see art like the Olumeye figurine 
which narrates Yoruba's legends of feminine power and cosmic balance. We see the Ife bronze head and Ife terracotta head, which are silent ambassadors of an age of artistic mastery under noble courts. And then there is the Benin bronze head and plague which stand as bold reminders of a kingdom's splendor and nobility. Then we also see the Egala mask and uh, the Egala Helmets mask. And uh, this was more of capturing the spirit and spectacle of traditional masquerades. There are so so many of them that I can't even begin to list them all. There is the Ibuku leaded bronze vest, which was at a time when art and commerce were italicized. So this this is such a rich show of our heritage and and it's something that every one of us really need to experience by themselves these artifacts are not just objects but they are bridges that connect us to our ancestors narrators of our shared history and the pride of a resilient nation Omo, Nigeria fine Nigeria get talent whatever you want to say is in and our history keeps showing us that every now and then. And that is it guys. That is the story that we wanted to tell something about our history. Of course, this might not be all, but Discovery Museum sure does a good job in showing us our history in a way that we haven't experienced before so guys please like subscribe and share and please return back because there will be a lot of stories on this channel in the future not even in the future it might be tomorrow it might be this evening okay guys see you later bye